My name is Howard Olson, and my company is High Output Training Systems. So we're in the sales training space, but really when people get done working with us, they realize that it's not just a sales training business. We are really kind of in the leadership, life skills, and human interrelation business. We just happen to call it sales training. I had the good fortune of traveling pretty much the whole planet, traveling 260 days a year. I've done business in over 30 countries. and. Uh, I've been, living, uh, I've been living very well and financially rewarded very well living in Asia and uh, the company that I began my career with asked me to relocate back to North America as the Vice President of, of North American Sales Operations. What I didn't know is that as, as, my, as my household goods were being shipped across the sea from Asia back into North America, the company was in the middle of a merger. Two monstrous multi-billion dollar firms came together and by the time that I landed, the CEO that had recruited me to come back as VP would merged out and literally the day after that I landed back on North American soil I also got merged out. They didn't need two CEOs and they didn't need two VPs. I would honestly say that I had defined myself and my whole yeah my self-perception was based around my accomplishments based around the deals you know the 50 million dollar deal with Hewlett Packard the you know the the 20 million dollar deal with Logitech and all that and, and I, you know so I had a lot of stuff I had sports cars and I had four Harleys and I had big houses and good lifestyle and sm folk smoked really good cigars and drank nice wine and lived in nice places and uh, and came actually came back to North America with a pretty good bankroll but you know when uh, you lose your job and you think you'll find one to replace it tomorrow and then two years of tomorrow's come and go it doesn't take too long to burn through what you've got and uh, and all of a sudden, all the money and all the prestige and, 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 and basically the title and the financial resources that went with it, when it disappeared, so did my sense of self. And uh, I found myself in a very dark place. And I can tell you, when I was 35 years old, uh, I got to a place where I believed that I had already seen my best years, that I was a has-been, washed up, been there, done that, and I ain't never coming back. I really began to believe that lie and uh, spent the better part of 2002 uh, partly catatonically depressed, not remembering any of it. And the parts that I do remember, I just remember trying to hurl myself out of the 27th floor window of the apartment we were now renting because somebody else had our house and hoping that as I pressed against the glass, it would give way and it would look like an accident when I hit the ground. But, but a God that I didn't know, I guess he had a different plan for me. He wouldn't let that glass break. <laughs> You know, a lot of people will be invited to church by a friend or they'll have an inspiration looking at a rock. Uh, it wasn't that way for me. I was sitting in my living room one afternoon. I had uh, finally found some work and uh, was working and built a company. And, and the owner of that company called me up one Saturday and just basically said, you know what, we're grateful for the work that you did for us. And, uh, but I got bad news for you. We're declaring bankruptcy Monday morning. We've outstripped our resources and another opportunity came and went, number four in a course of two and a half years. And, uh, my wife overheard this conversation and she'd been very stoic and very strong and and she began to she just began to weep uncontrollably she says you know we're done you, you're not getting paid again are you and i said no and she says that's it she says i don't blame you i see how hard you work i see how hard you try i see how industrious you are i know how smart you are i understand all that i hold no blame with you but we are finished and i said well i don't think so I said, what do you mean are you deluded and i said no I said, but if you look at where I was six months ago trying to kill myself every day and you look at where we were yesterday, at least I believe in me again. And as I spoke those words, I can only tell you this, the true story. I had an out-of-body experience. I literally floated out of myself and from the corner of my living room looked back down upon myself talking with my wife. And as I was talking with her, I watched her and the wall and the ceiling and, and everything behind her melt. And I had this image of me standing on a stage talking to an audience, uh, giving them some message of hope and courage. And I don't know how long it went on. For me, it felt like maybe 20 minutes or so. And I... I had this vision, I had this glimpse of it, and I sucked back into my body, and an instant my wife looks at me, and all of a sudden I'm back in my living room again, and she's right in front of me, and she looks at me, and she says, what just happened to you? I said, you saw that? She says, yeah, I saw that. I said, what did you see? She said, well, Howard, your eyes went gray and your body went limp, and I swear to God, you just died right in front of me. I was calling an ambulance to come and get your dead body. <laughs> wow. And let me tell you what I just saw. And so I, I related to her what I had just finished relating to you, and, and so we both agreed that something had happened but we couldn't reconcile how we saw it so differently. <laughs> and we didn't talk about it again because we had no frame of reference. We weren't churchgoers. I mean, to me, church was just a thing you took pictures of if you visited Europe, nice architectural wonders. And so, you know, I had no church background, didn't grow up in one, didn't go to one, had never looked for one. And, and, and that was kind of the end of the conversation. We went to bed that same night. Um, this was uh, the middle of August, uh, 2002. 
went to bed that evening, and I can only tell you about three o'clock in the morning, how do I describe this? This incredible white light filled my living, my, my bedroom and my sleeping body, and as Paul got shooken off the horse, I got kicked out of the bed, and uh, I climbed back into the bed, and Michaela wakes up, she says, what are you doing? I said, that wasn't me, I think, I think God has just come and spoken to me. And she said, and she just looked at me, she said, if that's coming out of your mouth, that's gotta be the truth. What did he say? And I'll never forget what God said to me that night, a God that I didn't know and wasn't looking for. So I didn't know it was God, I knew it was something. And he said to me, he said, Howard Olson, I've given you incredible gifts and I've given you incredible talents, but all these years you've done nothing with them. You've traveled the world, you've made a lot of money, and you've had more fun than one human being should have in a lifetime, but that is not the plan or the purpose that I have for your life. He says, I want you to give hope and courage to those that have lost it but don't know where to find it. But the problem is you'll never be able to touch their hurting hearts if you've never felt their kind of pain, which is why I let you go through what I let you go through. Now go back to bed, I love you. You're gonna be okay. And so we had this profound moment twice in a day now, something supernatural that we had no frame of reference for it happened. Didn't really talk about it again, and you know, kind of six months went by, and fast forward five and a half months, if you look at your calendar, January 5th, 2003 is the first Sunday in 2003, and I'm sitting in my living room, and this voice goes off in my ear and says, I want you to go to church today. I want you to go to church today, and it just repeated and repeated and repeated until I finally did something about it. I went to the closet, pulled out the yellow pages, opened it up, found a church, went there. It was an amazing service about hope and opportunity. The pastor who I'd never met, a church I'd never been in, at the end of the service basically said, there's somebody here today and I need to speak with you. The Holy Spirit has just spoken. There's 600 people. He's got a message for you. God wants you to know that it was him that came into your living room six months ago, and God wants you to know that it was him that came into your bedroom that same night. And here's what God said to you that night. And this man that I had never met said word for word. He said he's given you gifts, he's given you talents, and he wants you to give hope and courage. And those were those two words to those that have lost it and don't know where to find it. And all he wants you to know is that every word that came out of my mouth this morning in this room full of 600 people, God put it in my mouth for your ears. He loves you so much that he'd single you out in a crowd like this. And all he wants to know is, are you ready to know him? And I just sat, I, I'll never forget it. I sat there and I was dumbfounded. And I tell the story, I, I cry. And I just looked up and I said, okay, I don't know who you are and I don't know what you want, but clearly what I'm doing is not working. So if all I got to do is say I'm in, I'm, I'm in. And I said, okay, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. And, uh, and it was incredible. It was, I had been wound up. I was probably more wound up than I realized, kind of like the inner core of a golf ball. I just, I just felt it all let go. I came home from church that afternoon. My wife didn't come with me. She said, how was it? And I said, well, that was interesting. <laughs> so all I could pretty much explain to her. And Anyway, fast forward the story. Give it about six months. She looked at me one day. She says, you going to that church again today? And I said, yep. She said, can I come with you? Sure, I know by now I'm smart enough. Don't ask any questions. Just let her figure it out for herself. And so we're, getting, we're driving up there. And I just we got stuck at the stoplight. And I just looked at her and I said, can I ask you just one question? And she said, yeah, sure. I said, what made you change your mind about coming to church today? She says, well, I know a lot of things about you. I said, really, what do you know? She says, well, I know you're way too smart to buy into a cult, so it can't be that. <laughs> I said, no, nah, it's no cult. She says, I know something else, too. I said, what's that? She says, you're a kinder, softer, and gentler man than the one that I married, and I want to find out what happened to you. <laughs> She's now a Christian. We still attend the same church, and, uh, and I guess that's really what I do for a living. I talked about me having a sales training company. I'm not in the sales training business. I'm in the hope and courage business. Mm -hmm.